Hey everybody. So a long, long time ago, I, uh, I did a video about how to give an airbrush a deep clean. And uh, I have some clogged airbrushes. Well, one that's clogged, one that could just use a little bit of uh, elbow grease. And then um, I also wanted to show some of the other airbrushes that I have. Um, so yeah airbrushes right this is I think this is the first airbrush that I ever had and I think that I got this uh, when I was like 12 years old at Michael's and I remember that it was like 750 you know back then <laughs> um, and I think that they still sell these but you know don't knock these because this is what they call a single action um, meaning that uh, basically you press this down, air comes out, and then you screw this closed or open to allow paint to come through the nozzle. That's a single action. These, however, are great for priming. And they're great for like big projects where uh, you don't want to have to fiddle with a, a dual action airbrush uh, like but for instance, you know, priming is a good example. So you can, these are um, these little pink cup guys. These are a standard size. Um, you can fill these up and, and even, um, yeah, the, uh, these are a standard size. Like even you can find like big, big jars like this. Uh, like this is a, a thing of rubbing alcohol and, and that threads onto there. Um, so, you know, the, don't, don't knock these, these have their, their place. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I keep them around. This is, uh, kind of like an updated version. This is the, uh, geez, like the $12 Harbor Freight, um, airbrush. And I think that even this little adjuster, like this quick release that I bought, cost more than this airbrush did. Um, that this this connects to my compressor, all of these, like I can just uh, pop these on and off using the uh, the quick release from my uh, from my compressor. But um, so this is the same thing. I would say that these are even easier to maintain. They're easier to take care of because the uh, the nozzle, never actually touches paint. It just comes out of the, you know, out of here. And, you know, again, like these are a standard size. So I, I, I hang on to these bottles and, uh, they typically sell them, you know, next to where the airbrushes are in places like Hobby Lobby, Michaels or Hobby Town, you know, any hobby places that's worth their salt is going to, um, have, uh, these kind of standard size little jars. So, these guys, very easy to clean. That's the upside. Um, you can mix up a whole big jar of primer or color or whatever, put the lid on it, put it aside. Um, that's the, the, the plus side of these. Down, downside being um, they just don't have, they're, they're no good for detail. They have no control. Um, but great for uh, for priming, and uh, also these are a standard size. If you didn't know that, like the little cups that go into um, the uh, the tops tops of uh, gravity fed um, dual action type airbrushes. Um, so. This used to be my go-to workhorse airbrush. Um, this one, I'm pretty sure it, you know, it is like, it really needs a deep clean. Um, let me show you a little bit about how a dual action airbrush works. So uh, this is an Iwata Neo. And um, they sell these, you know, again, at like a lot of Hobby, like, uh, Hobby Lobby Michaels and um, places like that. They're, it's a good beginner airbrush. Um, it's a, it's, it is a workhorse. You can dump, 
you know, a handful of sand in here and then airbrush with it. It's, it's, this is a tough, uh, tough airbrush, right? It doesn't need a lot of maintenance. It doesn't need a lot of, um, uh, it's not very finicky about what kind of paint goes into it. Like you can see, there's just like lots of paint and, you know, there's, I'm sure there's lots of gunk in here. Um, so, um, dual action, right? Dual action means that you push down to adjust the amount of airflow coming in, right? And then you pull back to adjust the amount of paint that comes out of the reservoir, out of the tip, or through the reservoir and out the tip, right? So typically when you're cleaning your airbrush, um, you can pull these, you know, this stuff all comes apart too. Um, I don't re recommend taking that part. The paint is never supposed to actually get back here into this little mechanism. And then back here, you know, in here, there's like rubber parts and things like that, little gaskets, and um, you don't you don't want to melt those. And then a lot of times the um, the solvents, the th things that you might use to clean a clog, are going to break down those seals, and uh, they're going to be very very tough on the uh, internal mechanisms. So this kind of stuff, um, airbrush restorer. Um, Lacquer thinner is another good one, and um, the uh, the industrial version acetone, which will melt anything, uh, acrylic paint, plastic, um, you name it, it will melt everything, including possibly melt the chrome off of your uh, off of your airbrush. So I don't recommend using this stuff. It is an option though. If you have a really really tough clog, and there's nothing else that will do the job. And, you know, if you're using your uh, like single action airbrush <laughs> instead of the dual action, you don't want to mess with the internal components, you can use acetone and it will strip the paint off of anything. Um, so, these are, this is what I prefer to use though, to actually clean uh, the airbrushes that I have that are a little bit nicer, you know, any dual action airbrush. Um, this is uh, um, Createx um, Airbrush Restorer, and then this is Tamiya Lacquer Thinner, and they're both gonna do the same job. They're basically just gonna melt um, acrylic paint. And uh, I will show you just real quick how that works. Um, I'm just gonna put something down to protect this. Um, my little cutting, my uh, self-healing mat thing. Um, because this stuff can strip the, uh, these, uh, like heat stamps and stuff off of these. So, yeah, I'll show you how, how this stuff works is it, uh, you just pull a little bit on there and, uh, grab like a little paper towel and it just comes off just like that. So basically, it, it just um, it just melts uh, acrylic paint. So I can even use the needle too, right? And um, I can. Uh, I'll get this clean first. Um, I can use the needle, right, and then uh, put a little bit of that. Uh, of that cleaner in there um, and then just kind of run it just ream it through here through these little parts and a lot of times that's all it takes if you have like a little clog or something is you can just kind of run it through and then just like go like this and and that will kind of take care of any like paint that's in here that's that's causing the clog. So um, sometimes you know it might it might take a little more than that, but like most of the time that's basically that's all it takes is that. Um, so you know again like I don't recommend taking all of this guts apart 
because you don't need to to clean it. Um, you can just leave all that intact and then uh, clean the airbrush, right? So, but let's say that that doesn't do the trick, right? And you have to actually get inside of here. Um, there's something for that too. So I typically, um, this could be a little bit clogged. Typically, I like to just leave these parts thumb tight. And thumb tight just means that it's not screwed on any tighter than I can do it with my fingers, right? When you, when you bought your airbrush, uh, it came with one of these. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if this is the right one. Yeah, I think that is. That's the right one. But basically, this is just a, a little wrench that uh, is designed to get these parts in here loose. Right? So, now that I'm in here, um, this is where you get your clogs, is, in, is inside here. Um, that's where the, the vast majority of of clogs happen, or pretty much all of them, in my experience. So, I will show you another tool that is your best friend for cleaning your airbrush. Um, you might have gotten one of those like little pipe cleaner sets that came with your airbrush. Um, I don't have one because I immediately throw them in the garbage if they come with my airbrush. Um, they're pretty much worthless. Um, so I actually, I, I prefer um, lacquer thinner. Um, I, I like this stuff and I think it might even be a little bit cheaper. Uh, so what you do is you take these guys, right? And then this is just a little thing. These are for your teeth. Um, and it has like a little wire here and then like a little kind of pipe cleaner thing on the end. This is what you want though. This is the thing, this is the tool for the job, right? So you just go in there and then you kind of get in there and ream it out. And that, it, it, that will take care of it the rest of the time. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of paint that's getting melted in there. Um, so, you know, the, the, this stuff, um, this will do the trick, airbrush restorer or lacquer thinner. I personally, I prefer lacquer thinner, but I think it's just a, it's just a matter of personal preference, right? So if you are doing this, if you're doing this step, like every, every time that you airbrush, um, where you're, where you're actually going in here, and, and reaming it out, um, you'll never get another clog ever again. If you do that every time that you airbrush, um, like I'll show you my, um, I'll show you my infinity, right? So my infinity is more, it's a, it's a more expensive airbrush. It's a higher end airbrush. It's, uh, the, the, the needle, Inside of it, the nozzle and the needle are much more, um, it's much more built for very fine detail, right? Um, this guy, this guy's clean. I can just put this one away and it will be ready to go next time. You know, if I, if I really wanted to, I could clean this paint in here and stuff like that, but that has absolutely nothing to do with the clock. This, this guy is clean as a whistle now. So here's my, this is my, uh, my infinity uh, or my, my, yeah, it's a, it's a, my harder and steam back. Sorry, not, not infinity. It's an evolution. Infinity is like a, a thousand, like a $1,500 airbrush. And then I think I have the $300 version, but, uh, you can see, you know, there's a little bit, little teeny tiny bit of paint on there. Like if I just dip this in here as I'm, getting ready to airbrush, um, that, that's going to take care of, of that problem. Um, so this is, this is a, you know, it's, it's, it's not as, um, oh, it's actually a 0.4 millimeter. 
Yeah, so um, that's one nice thing with the uh, with the Infinities, or sorry, the Harder and Steambecks, is that uh, their, their needles are going to have these little grooves in the back. So you can tell exactly what size uh, nozzle and, and needle you're working with. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, you can buy, um, like multiple needles of different sizes. And, um, basically what that does is it, the, the, the smaller, like the, the, uh, like pointier and finer the, um, the, the needle and the, um, little connecting piece, the, um, the more detail you're going to, the more fine detail you're going to be able to get using your airbrush, right? So this is a nice thing about the, um, the Harder and Steambecks is that um, they have like a quick release type thing. And uh, here's the, this is the Harder and Steambeck version. So if I just go in here, and typically when I use this airbrush, I do, I, I do this every, every time. Every time I use it, I, uh, I just get in there and I kind of clean it out a little bit. And I've never had a clog in, uh, in all the time that I've had this. And I've had this airbrush for years. So, you know, knock on wood, but never had a clog yet. Um, and that's just from cleaning it pretty well every time I use it. So this one is good to go, ready to go, right? So I saved this one for last. Um, this one is, it is clogged. This is the Grex. Um, the, the reason why I, um, I saved this one for last is, uh, because this is the, um, this is the airbrush that, um, that I would recommend getting to most people. Um, so, okay, what is this one? Yeah, that's a, a 3.3 millimeter. Um, so this one is gonna be like, okay, so before I, before I take anything apart, if you have, if your, um, if your needle is stuck, you can't pull it back and it's stuck in here, what you can do is just um, like tighten this part really, really tight and then pull back on it and it'll get the needle unstuck. Um, so yeah, you can see there's a little bit of paint on there, just a little bit, um, but you know, this is pretty much all you have to do to clean any of the clogs and uh, get everything clean as a whistle. So I wish that, um, I wish that the Grex had a, um, had a, like a quick release, uh, front, like nozzle part, like, like the, um, Evolution does, but it doesn't, but these are like, uh, these are like an erector set. Um, you can there, you know, you can use them as a workhorse. You can use it as a fine detail airbrush. Um, it, you know, it, it, it does it all. So if I was going to recommend like one airbrush, you know, if you're going to buy one airbrush that's beginner friendly, but that you can use up to, um, you know, intermediate and advanced levels. And then they have like these, these nice, the same feature where you can tell the size of the needle, uh, what kind of needle you're working with by uh, going by these little indentations on the, the back of the needle. And uh, yeah, so I'll show you how, how the kind of like guts of this one work in the front. Um, and you can see that that, that fixed the, the clog in there. But um, same thing with this one. This just has a little hex nut on the front, which is nice. Um, and then you pull this apart, or you unscrew this part, and then get in here. And 
and then that cleans the clog. But uh, but yeah, if if I was gonna recommend an airbrush, buying an airbrush for you know beginner friendly, but will get you up to the those kind of advanced uh, like you can change the needles, get a much higher detail needle, or you can use it as like a workhorse and put a much bigger needle in it, uh, and then change out your nozzles in there. This is the this is the airbrush that I would recommend if I was gonna recommend buying one. And they're 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 relatively inexpensive compared to um, they have the little magnetic um, front piece and. Um, this is mostly just to protect your needle, this, so that it doesn't get bent or uh, like if you drop it, it doesn't, you know, mess up the front of the needle. You don't need this when you're airbrushing. Um, and then I found that some, if you're doing a ton of airbrushing, sometimes like you can get paint that builds up on these and then it'll, it'll cut, like pull up and then cause like a splatter and stuff like that. So you, when you're airbrushing, you can just take it off. So it's nice to have that little magnetic feature in the front. Um, I wish that, that these would do that too. These, these have, um, you know, this thing in front. So this doesn't, um, this doesn't build up paint the way that, or it doesn't do like pooling and stuff the way that these, that, that this design does, but you can just pop that off. And if you're doing a ton of the same color, you know, um, just use one of these. But uh, anyways, that's uh, that's how that works. And um, yeah. And then also you can set uh, a stop on these so that um, you they, they pull back to a certain spot and then they can't go any farther, um, which is nice if you just never want to like open up your airbrush too much so that you're dumping out paint you can just set like a little stop for yourself in the back which is another cool little feature um, but yeah if I was gonna recommend one just to the beginner I would recommend a Grax so um yeah that's uh that's that and um I hope that answers your or if you're having problems I hope that fixes it for you and uh, if you have any questions just leave a comment down there and I will try and get back to you and until the next time I will see you in the next one take care of yourselves